Um, before we call the meeting to order, if I could real quick, introduce you to Jeff Heglin. He's our operations manager. Um, he's gonna be um, filling in my shoes in the future. So um, yeah, and this is Randy Scrooge. He's the GM for West Sound. And Jim Hart is one of their commissioners. Susan Way is another commissioner. And their third commissioner is Jerry Lundberg right here. And then this is the plant manager, Marty Grable. And of course, you know, Jay Rosa Peppy. Before, so. And then we have we have Eric and Heidi on the right. Zoom here. Okay. okay. So, oh, looks like looks like Dennis is trying to join us as well. There we go. I think we're full complement now. Okay. We're in the chair. So I look back. Yep, you're in the oh, chair, okay. I believe. Let's call this meeting to order. It is uh, whatever time it is. Uh, welcome everyone. Uh, let us quickly go into the uh, first agenda is approval of SAC minutes from 19 March 2024. Moved and seconded. We have a I vote for a positive. Call for the vote. Aye. Call for the vote. Aye. 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 All right. Number two, switch gear replacement. All right. Last time we spoke, we were looking for bids to replace our uh, automatic transfer switch for the old side of the plant. Um, it was installed in the 80s. Um, we received multiple bids, and selected them, got a contract signed, uh, ordered the transfer switch, it's delivered. We're trying to schedule that installation for the end of June or the first of July. I've got to reply back on. Um, that'll be uh, one of the capital projects completed this year for another one. Isn't it? Questions? Mm. No, we're good. Next, next is grit pump replacement. All right. Um, we've got approved a budget for a grit pump replacement this year for CIP. And we did place an order for the grip pump on March 21st. The lead time's 20 weeks on that. We should receive it by um, July, August, unless some changes. Um, we'll be installing that ourselves. Um, we'll need to replace a failed um, out of service one. Um, any questions on that one? Um, just as you're going, Mark, if you don't mind, um, you had some wonderful news about some of the equipment uh, that was budgeted. Even lower than cost. If there is an item that does, could you just let us know that? The ADS would. Yeah, the automatic transfer switch would came in well under cost. If you had budgeted 100. That's, yeah, it's just as we as we go. I hate to say it, it's great news. Yeah. You know. Yeah, I agree. I'm yeah. Take this to council. Thank you. Your signature. All right. So, so I have a, um, Mark, I have a question. Uh, this is the um, submersible. Uh, slurry pump, correct? For the grip pump, right? Mm -hmm. It's not submersible. It just pulls the. This is just a. It's, it's a dry pump. Yeah, it's a dry pump. It's it's a dry our pump. Okay. Primary okay. basis pulls it from the grit vortexes. Sure. Okay. Other questions? All right, next, fine screen replacement. Okay, um, so these uh, were kind of installed a while ago. We started looking at replacement costs. We have some corrosion. Um, these are costing about 10000 a year to just to maintain parts, placing the brushes twice a year on each one. Um, so we contact some engineers, obviously, we're trying to look at different designs that we can do for the fine screens at the plant, since they're not optimal for the plant. Um, there's a lot of new stuff out there. So um, I, I received a draft to go from the engineer, contact some engineers to do some engineering for us. And and uh, so I submitted some comments to them and, and uh, returned them. I don't have any further updates on that. Just trying to see where we're at, what our options are. Mm -hmm. Time frame? Uh, 
I'm at the mercy of, of engineer um, people engineering. Yeah. Is your answer future? Future. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. TBD. Yeah. TBD. Questions. Next would be concrete structure repairs. All right. So we had a lot of. Uh, Little ones or pre-existing uh, issues with uh, CMU blocks from the the Squally quake. We had some asphalt that had sank. We had sidewalk that had sank, and and um, we had some panels uh, out front of the walk that were cracking up. So we really just kind of bundled it together this year for for a concrete project, trying to get some bids in to to do all of them. And and this did come in or they fixed. You know, fix a lot of stuff, fix our CMU block, uh, port a new curb or a new sidewalk, new curb, uh, panels at the front entrance. If you guys go to tour there, you'll see there's some new panels going up to the admin building. Um, yeah, we're back in business on that. It was a smaller project, but definitely a necessary one. Questions? Yep. Asphalt modifications. All right, um, asphalt modifications. Uh, last year, we, you know, last year we came under the uh, industrial stormwater general permit um, for anything within the plant. Um, you're required to sample for them. Um, we, at the end of last year, we had some money budgeted for asphalt modifications for this, trying to remove stormwater drains from inside the plant, just in case. So we wouldn't have to, not that we were concerned about having issues, but we didn't want to pay for sampling. We we're, you know, we're inside of the treatment plant. We didn't want to worry about it. So, so we did get an exceedance last year um, on one of the storm drains by our waste gas layer. So we pulled that one out, put a catch basin in, um, and we pump it to the lift station um, to, to, to pull it off the sampling requirements and then this year we had behind the back of the plant um we had a couple storm drains one of them was right below the retzel manhole main that comes down and you know on time you could definitely see that there was some soap suds coming out of that thing um just a weird design back there so we wanted to decommission though that storm drain um, and anything back there. So we really, that's what this asphalt was, just decommission those existing storm drains that were back there. So they're no longer there. So I sent a, um, what did I do? I sent a um, stormwater change, sample point change to ecology um, to remove those two. So it, it'll take two off of our sampling requirements for, for us. and. We have one more in the parking lot that we're under. Uh, well, a couple of them, but all need the same one we're trying to focus on in the future. Just remove any potential for pollution from inside the plant outside. Um, yeah, so that was the... I have a question. Go ahead. I didn't know that you could put stormwater into the sewer plant. I thought we were... Well, precluded from doing that. So they're not really calling it stormwater because we have chemical storage in a bay in a basin, and we have a waste gas flare. It actually wasn't even a stormwater drain. It was a runoff from the asphalt that they called stormwater. So we put a catch basin there for our waste gas flare and any potential for spillage and we block that hole so they couldn't say that because when we sample from it it pulls up we couldn't even get a sample it would pull up in this little corner and then overflow to this creek the you know that little storm creek that runs under the plant under the plant not yeah. the creek but the storm water bypass okay there was actually no pipe there or anything the runoff would just go there so so because this was not a typical it was storm a, drain, it you was, were able to do that. It was not even a storm okay. drain. Okay. Yeah. It was any, any only did that because of the potential. We had chemicals stored in our storage building. Mm -hmm. And he said, if you had a flood here. And so we, we really couldn't sample. We had to like put plastic 
to where we could catch it mm -hmm. as it was raining and trying to get it to overflow into a into a vibe into a bottle and it was a silly one but mm -hmm. um, i told them exactly what i was going to do i'm like okay we're just going to do a catch basin here then because mm -hmm. it's never going to you know we're never going to have anything here so mm -hmm. okay thanks would that would that be um basically like what a fuel station would have under their cover they have a basin there but it doesn't go to storm it goes to sewer it's secondary containment kind of the same thing in case of emergency that's what it's there for yeah, and a lot of these, what they did is they took and put catch basins in, and then they daylighted them to uh, soil within the right. Bottom. And so, if it runs over the top of the asphalt, it's the soil. It's not considered something that we need to sample. It's still soil water, but we don't sure. Those in the catch basin, we have to sample it. So as, as as the ground is filtering, assuming that the soil is filtering. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah, Thank so you. this one we actually have just pumping across the parking lot to the other side of the plant right. to run down on it. doesn't even go it's, it's it doesn't run, go to Wood Station. It's run, run, run. Yeah, I've run, just spoke with the Wood yeah. Station. It doesn't go to Wood Station. Mm -hmm. It's an open pipe that right. goes to our okay. to other side of our parking lot. Well, I didn't mean to bog things down. I no, that's all right. No, it's a good question. All right. MBR blower replacement. So the MBR blower replacements. Um, we, same thing, contacted some engineers for this project because, um, you know, with our capacity chat that we've had before, NDR is the, uh, the least amount of money that we could spend for expansion. Um, on the treatment plant, we have eight open cassette spots for the NDR. Um, problem is, um, you know, when the NDR was brought in years ago, um, it was kind of just for redundancy, so it wasn't really designed fully to take on additional stuff. Uh, so if we were to get eight additional cassettes, how's the aeration? Do the blowers work? Um, currently, if we added eight additional sets, you know, we the blowers and the aeration wouldn't work. So, so this study is to um, tell us, you know, with this future loading, currently what we have, what do we need as far as aeration? Um, what do we need as far as blowers go? Uh, we have a blower that we keep replacing, you know, that, that's, that's kind of under design for our current loading um, that we keep fixing. So, so this uh, engineering study is to tell us, hey, hey, you know, what direction can we go with this? Um, we do have grant funding for that uh, from Ecology for the blower replacement, but we also budgeted for that. Um, so we did sign, uh, uh, they sent us a scope and a technical service agreement which was signed and returned to them on June 7th. Um, the same scope is, is uh, on the next one that we'll get to. Any questions on that? So Southern and Neat really kind of tie them together. Yeah, yeah. aeration and blower, it's, it's, we're really in the same spot. So, so you're doing the engineering for the for to match the, the replacement blower, but at the same time, what's needed for an, up, an upgrade? Yeah, so what type of aeration how much aeration do we need? What type of aeration do we need to change the current setup of aeration? Gotcha. What blowers do we need for this design if we add eight additional cassettes? And and, um, and they're going to tell us all that. Actual stuff. So really, it's look, looking at future growth then. Yeah, it's kind of like the first step we have, we have to do, you know, um, aside from, you know, just you can't just drop eight more cassettes in there. No. <laughs> well, you can. We're yeah. finding that the engineering study. Stop panning out how the numbers were indicated mm -hmm. on the process summary chart. Right. And so we don't want to spend money on something that's not going to spread the market. Sure. Uh, also, we have to consider the nutrients shown for that. Well, I mean, you know, for 20 years, I would be surprised if you didn't yeah. have a change in planning and implementation. Yeah, things have accelerated a little. Yeah. Any other questions? All right, Sorry. the aeration upgrades. Uh, same thing, um, this is included in the MBR um, blower replacement, the aeration uh, upgrade controls is, is really the same thing. I'm, you know, I'd love to move as fast as possible on these, obviously, um, but it's in their hands, you know, kind of just take each step as we get it, as you know. And, and so um, I'll have a better idea uh, 
you know, we just started, they just sent me a drop folder last week. So, but we'll see how it proceeds. But yeah, really it's about focus on uh, upgrading our MBR so, so we can hold more stuff and, and drop our CBOD loading. And, and it does treat nutrients a lot better too, which is which is on the, on the front burner for everybody, at, at least for this current decade. Questions? Nope. SCADA network equipment. Uh, so SCADA network equipment, we have a, you weren't here last time, I don't know if you read it. We have uh, a couple, we have an old side of the plant and a new side of the plant. The old side's kind of on this modicon stuff, which has to send a single something else to make it work. And the new side is on Allen Bradley controls. And so we have two complete systems that run separately and we have to spend a lot of money on tying those two together and maintaining both of them. So we're trying to, our attempt is to, is to bring both of them up to, to the current Allen Bradley so it runs on one thing. So we're not having to, we, we actually do have a lot of the Modicon stuff fail and, and it's, they're outdated. They have new stuff uh, that's the same type of stuff, but it, but it doesn't communicate. So, um, so that's what the project is here. We've got a couple of quotes on this already and, and, and the quotes came in uh, under budget, but still requiring us to, to uh, scope it out at this time and, and uh, create an RFP. We really haven't gotten to that stage. So did you have to do a sole source for to get Allen Bradley equipment specifically? So that's one of the things I'm looking at to the doctor's office because it's kind of bordering on the RCW requirement. Yeah. And I want to push the integration part of it, but there's also an equipment supply. Mm -hmm. So that's what kind of throws it out of that sole source. But if the state auditor is willing to uh, say that, yeah, we understand that the integration is the issue, mm -hmm. and the equipment is the key, the equipment's obsolete. Um, this is one of the things that was cut in the upgrade in 2004, 2006. We did not convert over the old uh, communication telemetry system, so we have a round robin system mm. that goes around. And the newer system just pulls the data as it needs it, and it just continues around, and then it's glitchy, and all these old-fashioned relays, and it's on a coax cable. Mm. Wow. And so it's... Everything else is on fiber. State of the art. Yeah. It just seems like every time we find a good product, I've, I I bump my head against that sole source thing. You art. know. Yeah, you know it's tricky because you don't want to violate the law, but then again, you know this we're looking at a particular company that put all the sense. So yeah. Or do we really want to pay somebody to go through all that code to say, oh yeah, we can do that? Yeah. It's just a yeah yeah. It's a fine line to walk. I know. Well, the other code was 1985. Mm. Visual basics. Oh my gosh. Uh, Visual basic on old school ladder line. And that's one of the problems too, is the squirt is having to maintain two different computer systems for that. So we have to purchase what three different softwares to be able to talk to the different stuff. It's just costing us money. And uh we're having failures and said it's three to put this one obsolete. Mm -hmm. So it's very frustrating. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? Next is the 2025 SCORF budget and ERU counts. All right, this was brought up just to kind of bring the new council person or the new SAC members up to date on what happens. So in June, WSUD starts its budget. And at the beginning of July, the city and the district provide their ERU counts for determination of the finances that they're available to the SWERF. And then by October 15th, the BSUD has to have to the SAC committee a permanent budget for review. And I did bring the um, old annual ERU calculation procedures uh, in case your new council person is um, I can give those. It. I can give them those out. Yeah. yeah. And then uh, that we have them. I understand it was 2010 and nothing is a perfect world, but they do work. Um, ah. pretty, pretty good. But that's the only reason this was on here is to make you aware of the procedure and what was going on. Uh, and typically, we'll have a meeting, you know, August, September, where we folks will get the uh, ERU count. So we both know where our finances 
the costs are going to be a cost allocation from the city and the district to fund that spur. And so, just to, oh, oh, I'm sorry. So Eric and Heidi, I'll bring those to you tonight so you can look them over. Okay, thanks. Just to let you know, Jeff, when he's talking about the city has to provide their what Rebecca does all that. It's in the background. I never had to do it. So not something you need to worry about. Oh, I should play that one. <laughs> he's already looking like a deer in the headlights. So well, okay. yeah, I should have told my look at deer headlights and more. Yeah, yeah. I think this about time about carrying around your job description. <laughs> <laughs> it's under review. Yeah. yeah. Well, uh, all right. Uh, next, Marine Pump Station update. Dennis, do you want to take that or? You're muted, though. Dennis, you're muted. Is it working there? now? Yes. Okay. Hi, everybody. Sorry, I could not be there, but uh, meeting the meeting, I got stuck in the office. So uh, I have a screenshot. Can I share my screen? You can. Let's see here. It's possible. I don't... <laughs> um, we, we've been fighting this camera, but I've got a little bit of a time lapse if you want to watch it real quick and I can kind of talk through it. So we are working on the dry well. It's been, uh, we did our most recent pave on Friday. Can everybody see the screen? No, not yet. Okay. Cannot see it yet. So Friday we did some concrete uh, for the drywall pit. So okay. we are doing that. Is it working now? Yeah. Okay. Yes. So it's a little fast, but I'll stop it if I need to. But lots of activity. Um, we expect that we're going to get away from this edge of the bank area in the next month. And the project will start focusing closer over to uh, the port and the existing restroom. So not not a real long time lapse, but it's pretty neat to see all the activity there. And that that dry well pit is pretty impressive. Dennis, how much concrete did we pour? Oh, I don't know what the most recent one is, but I think the floor was like 400 yards, cubic yards. And I think Crazy. the walls, we've had a couple pours of 200. So, and there's more to go. Dennis, is that the restroom still going to stay there? No, that's going to go away. Oh, okay. Wh where's the new one's going to be at? Uh, it's going to be, Jackie, help me out. Um, let me see. I'd have to pull up a concept. Sorry. <laughs> oh, that's okay. I was just curious. <laughs> no, no biggie. Good. Um, yeah, that's it. So we, we do have some deliveries. We're waiting for a big manhole vault that's going to take a crane to remove. And there might be some lead time issues with the delivery, but Overall, we got that tie and the bypass done. That was our only slow down here. So we're only a few weeks behind schedule. Nice. Any, any questions about that? Thanks. Thank you very much. Any questions? And last but not least, at least the leachate disposal. Can I start that off, Jackie? Yes, please. You're so, <laughs> so this is a, just a good conversation and awareness topic. Um, I wasn't real familiar with it, and I'm learning, and I've talked to our uh, counterparts over at West Sound. Uh, the city in West Sound have participated in a contract for a few decades, it sounds like, with is waste management up here. Is that correct? Yes. Oh, waste, waste management, sorry. So Leche is the decomposing byproduct of the landfill. Uh, it has to be disposed. Uh, there is uh, containment units out at the landfill. So it has to be disposed of. It is permitted through the Department of Ecology. EPA has approved it. Uh, they use our system for conveyance and then it ultimately ends up at West Sound for a final treatment and uh, uh, dispersal. Uh, Dennis? Uh, when yep. you say it ends up at West Sound, you mean you mean it ends up at the Squirf, right? The Squirf. South Kitsap Water Reclamation Facility, the plant. The plant. Sorry. Okay. Yes. I love the acronym. Yes, it ends up at the plant. So it uses Port Orchard as conveyance. They dump. Uh, we do identify, I would say the port and I both agree that we would like to re- discuss the terms and the communication of when it's disposed of so we can account for it. 
we were doing this bypass for this pump station that our council members are well aware of. And we were noticing our flows were a little up. And so there was a lapse in communication of the notification from West Sound. So we do want to renegotiate the terms of that. But as policymakers, we just want to uh, advise this board of the process that we're doing and the continuation of it. And if there's any input or questions that you have, I think it's a good discussion topic. Um, the city has its own contract with waste management. The squirt has its contract with waste management. Notification responsibility should be identified in your contractual agreement with waste management. Um, so they are permitted through the treatment plan and also permitted with the city of Bremerton. But you folks have your own separate contract as far as the conveyance through your system. We're not part of that. So am I, I want to make sure I understand correctly. So the city of Port Orchard's collection system is the only collection system that's involved in transporting the leachate. But, and then there's another contract with the squirf to process it. West Sound itself is not in it as a utility, no, as a collection system. We had received it, the city wanted in for revenue and took on in its own contract to receive it as collection. Okay, okay. Are, are you clear on that, Dennis? So the only thing that we need to negotiate with them is for the collection system piece of it. The SCORF will do their own correct. contract. For, okay, good. Yeah, correct. Um, and it's it's an old contract. And you're, it's hard to hear, I'm sorry, people in the back. So yes, the city has its own contract. Uh, we would like to be notified. Uh, we want to 100% account for what's being dumped so we can get the revenue that we get for that process. And I feel like there's improvement that could be done on that end. Yeah, the notification that you get from West Sound is simply the record logs that we receive from waste management. We provide them to the city and you folks are supposed to be providing the ones that you have so that we have concurrence on what was discharged. And so we have an issue any. with any kind of records logs communication that's, that's really in your contractual agreement between waste management and the city of Belosier. They are notifying us. Uh, Marty may have a courtesy let me know it's coming, but it's not our responsibility to notify the city of my understanding. Correct. Management. Correct. Why, why is waste management sending information of that tonnage to us if we're not in a receiving situation? That's my because, because we charge for processing through the treatment plant. Right. For but, gallon, but, and and well, is it my understanding that we receive the funds from West Sound? What did you say? Is it my understanding that once West Sound receives it and we report our what was dumped in our system, is it West Sound that compensates the city? No, it's no, it's waste, waste management. management. You have right. Okay. Wow. Yeah, it's really hard to hear. I'm sorry. I'm lost on the fact that what I think I'm hearing is waste management only dumps within the cities. Correct. Mm -hmm. Collection so I'm not I'm not quite sure why they would report they the waste management would report to us anything because we don't hold any contractual they're, they're, other they're, than they're, other they're, than knowledge. They report by virtue of that West Sound has a responsibility for the operation and maintenance of the South Kitsap Water Reclamation Facility. So we charge for the treatment portion, and then when this is all done. The city's supposed to get the driver logs on the discharges. We get driver logs on the discharges. And then we compare the two to make sure the waste management is providing us both the same information for charging. Right. Charge. And when it happened this spring, it came to light that we were not and had not been for quite a while getting those logs. Now, I suspect, I don't know, but I suspect that they were going to Cyberland somewhere to somebody who doesn't work for the city any longer. Cyberland. Yeah. So, so um, I, I, I mean, I don't think that they would purposely try and cut us out of what they owe us. I just think that it, it was a glitch, and now we're going to get it corrected. Is the bottom line? Well, you know, I don't think intentionally it would, but we know in the past there have been a lot of concerns and issues with getting the information from waste management. And it seems like the people that are in fund or the charge, which I believe if I remember are like in Escondido, California or something. Yeah, they're in you California. Know, you know, it seems like their management is responsible for providing that to us. 
uh, we've had to remind them that we're supposed ah. to get that information. Okay. Uh, and there's been times where several months or quarters have gone by before we finally receive that information. So, uh, so basically, we need somebody in the city that's going to bird dog them. Yeah. Well, they, they should be notifying us both concurrently. Right, right. Right. And right. then after that, we can pair yeah. driver blocks just so that we know that we're both, if you guys are billing a million gallons, we're both. Mm hmm. They tell us 1.2 and they tell you 1 million. We want to know why. The other thing to be uh, cognizant of, too, is when Mark Dorsey and I work this whole thing out with waste management, there is no partial loads. We consider every load whether it's a gallon or 6,000 gallons. That's what's going to be filled for every truck that's discharged into the treatment plant by virtue of going through the city's collection of data. We also yeah. have strength of it, don't we? Analytical data. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, ecology's permitted testing, which is not all that great. But that strength thing doesn't have anything to do. We're we're worried about volume. You guys are worried about strength. Yeah. Yeah. And I want to I want to clarify too that we have remedied it. I've been in contact with Matt Frame, and uh, I've had some conversations with our counterparts at the district. Uh, so we've remedied that. We're working on our financials to build them appropriately. Um, I think they got a little comfortable just over the years, and um, and we want notification. Uh, I threatened to not allow them to dump because we had no notifications. It wasn't the typical time of year that they dump, from my understanding. Uh, they do it with contract vehicles, so we get people calling in saying somebody's dumping in our system. So we treat that like an illicit discharge. So a big breakdown in their communication, and that's what we're going to revisit. Uh -huh. So what's the dollar? Oh, hold on, hold on, Eric. What's the dollar figure that we're talking about? I think it's approximately twenty thousand dollars, from what I understand, annually. Does that sound right, Jackie? I, I don't know. I have no idea. I, I thought it's more too. It hasn't happened since I've been here. So on average, uh, it's about sixty thousand dollars to treat the flat curve, six cents a gallon. So. Uh, oh. And then um, my understanding this year is we're going to be making three discharges based on the information I received from Marty, and that's going to be closer to between $120,000 of revenue to the district. So that would be basically one third to the So, so to, yeah, to me, it gets to be, I, I think you are too. The confusing part is you, I assume the city contracts with waste management for the use of your system to transport mm -hmm. that from wherever they dump it within your system mm -hmm. to the plant. That's, mm -hmm. And then the plant has another contract with waste management for treating it, mm -hmm. but they're not, what I hear you say is you're not getting gallon, gallon reports from waste management. That's coming to West Sound, which I- Well, that's because we charge for the treatment plant. We have nothing to do well, that's what I mean. I mean, I mean I, it, you, would, you would think the city would would. If I was in the city, I would want, I would want those numbers transferred to me so I know what to charge for our trans transmission costs. And as far as being the man, basically the manager of the collection system, I didn't know this existed for the five years I've been here. Makes, I had no idea. Two of us. So, so, yeah. so I didn't know to ask because I can see where you guys get. Apparently, you guys are getting lost on. No one's letting you know how many gallons you're right. transporting. So, right. so my my understanding is basically not to quote cool hand loop, but we have a failure to communicate. Mm -hmm. And Dennis and, and Marty will be communicating a lot more on this issue. Well, only, uh, for, uh, only for the driver blocks. Right. For the, only for, I understand. Yeah. But I'm saying to make sure what's processed is the same as dropped off. Well, yeah. and it, and it kind of got goes twofold too, Randy, that I see is that. Like if Marty gets something that says, oh, we're putting this much in, so here's how much you know you need to charge us. And then at that time, we don't get anything and Marty lets us know this came in. And conversely, if we get something and he doesn't, then we can make sure that we're catching the other side's interests, if that yeah. makes sense. They're not very good at doing quite well, we found it through process issues. Like, ah. we get those like two days before a tap. And well, it's a good thing that we have a good working relationship together. Yeah. But uh, 
Yeah. We are sending copies of the driver block that we received to the city for insurance. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I got assuming that our finances saying that yeah, everything is good. And then once that insurance is done, then we send out an invoice. Mm -hmm. That's another thing too. Their their invoicing and payment is not extremely timely either. Mm -hmm. Eric, do you have a question? Yeah, uh, I was just gonna say that collecting those fees would pick up on like the screen payment, things like that, that we went over earlier, you know, um, at $20,000 a year, that would, you said 10,000 a year annually for screens and things, that would be chipping away at least at paying for those. So, so. The, the, uh, the SAC committee, I don't know how many years ago this was, um, had agreed that that money that does come in to the squirt has to be earmarked for capital improvement. Oh, okay. We'll see okay. that capital budget. So anything that Marty decides that, you know, and the, the SAC committee approves for that money, that money's kind of distributed among everything. The problem that we run into uh, at the square is it is an inconsistent revenue stream. Uh, like I said, right. I, I ran the numbers for five years and it came out to like, you know, sixty thousand dollars a year, but um, you know, it might be fifty-two one year, seventy-three, and it's all over the place. Now they're telling him they're going to be doing three discharges. We're making some assumption that sure. it's going to be equivalent for each discharge, but they're not very good at it. Um, this came up. One of the things that I worked on last year, and we kind of backburnered because it became kind of a contentious issue with legal counsel on the contract because the city was involved and we need to make sure that we exclude the city, any mention of the city from our contract um, was renegotiating um, a, a price change on this because it's been the same rate for like 10 years. Mm. Yeah, uh, definitely treatment rates have gone up in 10 years. So. Right. And so at one time, I did get contacted by Kids at Health, and I can't recall when it is. I want to say it was about four years ago. And waste management was actually looking at putting in a system to air rate so they did not have those waste discharges. And the city of Bremerton, uh, we met uh, quite some time ago. So the city of Bremerton was looking to run sanitary sewer services out there. And at that time, they were potentially going to take on that leachate as part of their sanitary sewer system in uh, the industrial park out there. I don't know what happened. But... Well, they have that open treatment out there, like the, the sewage pond. Correct. And that industrial park out there. Um, is that, um, do they contribute to that at all? Or do they take everything off site back to you guys, to your so facility? I'm not sure of this. Did the city put a system in out there? I'm not sure. There was discussion no, about no, it, but I don't know. No, they have that open um, in, out at the, the uh, yeah, the port out there. They have that open pond, uh, sewage pond. So real, I hope that's yes. the, as the pond for the leaching. As I, I don't know how old any of this stuff is, but I can tell you what Mark Dorsey informed me that originally there was going to be one big sewer project all the way out to Belfair. And that was probably a part of this and it, it, it fell apart. That so. was the whole NASCAR. Yes. Um, and yeah. the city had indicated that well, since they were there, really cool. supposedly when they were going to do the forest expansion for uh -huh. the city, that they bordered that area and they were going to run sanitary sewer out there. If you remember we're back in, I'm going to take you back pre-2000, pre the city and the district were solicited to provide sanitary sewer out to that mm -hmm. park. And that was one of the main reasons why the city and the district moved forward with the NBR process was to be able to take those waste. And so it got kind of politicized and I, you know, just mm -hmm. most do things happen mm -hmm. in the that, you know, who knows what city happened. council changed it. Well, there was issues. They changed the there was issues with, if I recall, with uh, Sunny Slope because it was not an urban growth area. Sanitary sewer services could not be provided. And there was uh, people who were upset. Mm -hmm. Sewer was going to run through there. They didn't have access to it. It just 
the city came in and was going to try to help mitigate some of the issues. Mm -hmm. I don't know all the specifics. Mm -hmm. And a lot of this was hearsay on information that was conveyed. Which is, so yeah. I don't know specific facts. Mm -hmm. No, Doris wanted to come to the city of Port Orchard. Mm -hmm. The city decided they didn't want them. And, and it was new council. That's when Larry left. Because uh, that council was hostile. Yeah, this was the ski up. This was not the course, this was the ski up right. yeah. that happened uh, pre 2000, I think it started. But that was all part of the plan. Yeah. And what happened was when the city council changed, they, were, they weren't going to help the county do anything. And the council people who were on the board at that time, I would say, it was possible. Okay, well, that's that's water yeah. under yeah. All, all over the place. But bridge. that's why I did. No, yeah, I'm not saying it. Yeah. But we can we can let you folks yeah. know what we know about the discharges. Yeah, but said they're not very good. Matter of fact, and vice versa. I think that's how the only way we're going to police them. Yeah. Well, yeah, in some way with the city getting direct reporting. I mean, that's mm -hmm. I guess supposed to, and yeah. they're supposed to, but it doesn't happen. They always have management changes. Yeah, they're under all. One reason why nobody's looking for money and information, and usually, and I know I caught this a couple times too. They didn't notify us. We noticed the changes in the treatment plant, and when we would drive down, we noticed the truck down to a welcome site and it's all waste management. And Sounds, oh, like it 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 so, sounds like a good late fee situation. Yeah. Yeah. Now, yeah. I think we need to Sometimes we like need to start reaching city property yeah. instead of reaching here. Yeah, not we sure. supposed to know what the biggest thing is, is that if we don't, we should do something. Because we could violate permit if something was dumped again. In the past, they had dumped. Such a high load to us, we were having trouble, and they, then they we found out what they were dumping, and they had to aerate it for a couple of weeks before they could dump it. And yeah. that was back 20 years ago. I can give you folks a copy of their NPDF for it, but it's their testing requirement from ecology, and they did talk to stormwater years ago. I, I think that's more they're, the, they're not going to more in the weeds for this group. Yeah. I would say that. It's a communication effort on both both sides to talk to the waste management. We, we have a frustration. Yeah, no, I'm saying is we need to be better with waste management and then see how we can connect with um, with here. Yeah, and I just heard you so, so, yeah. so you got that one, Dennis? Dennis on our side? It, yeah. So we've we've uh, remedied the situation. Um there's some back work that we are going to work on because they may owe us some money. So, um, so, let me ask you this, Dennis. Did they inform you that they plan on doing two more discharges this year? Or? Uh, they have not. I was just looking at my emails from Matt Frame. Uh, well, I, I had heard that, so I don't know where that information came from then. So, the last time we had all spoke, you, the three of us, we had all got the notification. That hey, by the way, we just finished up leachate for the second time this year. Yeah, and there'll so be we one more. Know before it was yeah. hey, after a couple of days ago we finished leachate. So, so definitely that 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 was my frustration years ago. That that's what brought on the whole contract. So, Marty, you and you and the city, I guess, we're going to coordinate the communication triangle, how it works. Yeah, honestly, I didn't know that what the city had going on with their contract at all. I've actually never received any type of logs from the city. So it must have been a long time that mm -hmm. you guys have not been known because it's just been me every year sending them to like, hey, here's our logs. Yeah, I'm at five years. And like I said, I had no inkling. So, well, it sounds like maybe we need to talk to legal counsel. And if we do do a contract, then there's some kind of penalty for not providing the proper mm -hmm. information because that's. They should be notifying you. Mm -hmm. yeah. And and they are Matt Matt's corresponding now with waste management. Um, we're we're connecting with the West Sound, so that line of communication is open. And Patty, who does our billing, is all over them. So. Well, my understanding is they told us for everybody to be oh. discharging three times this year. Yes, I have. I'm looking at that. I apologize. So yeah, they they'll do another one this summer. 
Yeah. Yeah. All right. Did well, you guys get any logs from the second one? Sorry, Gary. That's all right. What's that? Have you gotten any logs? I asked for some driver logs after. Uh, I'm not, I'd have to go back and look. Let me check. I can tell you in a second here. Landfill hauling. I don't see him. The only thing we received was from you when you compared your spreadsheet for Patty. So, yeah, I, 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 once they told us they finished the hauling in May, first week of May, I said, okay, can we, you know, can we get the driver logs? Um, so that was a month ago now. <laughs> So that's really, I, I try and be, you know, as polite as possible when I deal with any business people. And so it's nothing new to me during this. So I, I do get used to, you know, you just have to keep emailing them and hey, you know, I do get, I do have the frustrations of noticing it in your treatment before you get a notification from them. That's, that's the worst way to know, you know, you know, to learn it. So you didn't have them on track? No, I mean, nothing about it. Any other questions at this time? I think we're in the weeds. <laughs> or does anybody want us to repeat this again? Go no. over for more clarity? Yes, please. No. <laughs> no. Let's start over. Right. No, no, it sounds like, no, it sounds like we got more better communication as we go forward. Oh, yeah. yeah. And the intent was to notify you, council members, of the new, of this, that the city has uh, partaken in this with the uh, waste management for several years and it's something that's likely to continue if that's the desire and uh, there is definitely process improvement needed mm -hmm. and 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 compliments uh west sound's been great their staff uh helping us rein them in so we'll see, we'll see if we can come up with some language you know if, if they don't provide notification or some kind of penalty or fine because you're telling me that they haven't notified you for years that is not a good thing yeah. Well, especially what Jim talked about, the fact is that we need to have notification for how that will adversely affect the plant for that surge of whatever they're dumping in the Right, process. or that they have issues with their limitations. Yeah, exactly. That, you know, they need to take that into consideration. Right. Well, yeah. You're not, you're going to, I'm surprised they're not communicating better on their, on their logs because you guys don't accept just any load out there. You don't accept hot loads of certain oil water separators or certain car wash, you know, um, you guys don't accept, accept that, right? Those all go to Tacoma. Yeah, right. this, this is right. kind of the weed, Derek, and I've been talking about yes. some of the issues that happened. Yeah, no, no, no worries. I was saying, as an example, I'm surprised they don't communicate better on what they're bringing in, when they're bringing it in. And this is not an issue for the council okay. to be involved in, besides the communication piece, the notification. Yeah. So... We can move on. Is that no events. Yes, <laughs> I think everybody's talking about that, that one. Yeah. No, interesting, interesting info. Thank you. Uh, the final one is date and time and place of uh, proposed next meeting. I would go with here. What is the, what is the need of the city and so typically late August? Early September, just to prepare the city for its budget and the ERU council are exchanging with the city and the district so they know what their budgetary obligations are going to be for square. We, we, yeah, we only meet once in August, so um, kind of a vacation month. So, about the uh, about the 10th September. of September, yeah, we're new. Uh, Noah will know well, yeah, no. So that worked for everybody, 9th, the 10th of September to Tuesday. Yeah. Do we always want to keep it on a Tuesday? What about a Monday or Wednesday? Or is Tuesday um, the best for everybody? Let's just ruin one day altogether. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Tuesday, I, I will be out that week. I'm out of town, so I will not be able to attend. We, we've got people. We, we've got people, Dennis. I know. Okay. <laughs> Till 3 p.m.? Yeah. yeah. Yep. Cool. Okay. Here at the district. Number yeah. 
Years ago, we used to do it at seven in the morning. Oh no! I'm down yeah. that. <laughs> go to a restaurant. Thank you. Take care. All right. Thank you very much. That was All right. Bye, guys. Any other Any questions for the good order here? Oh no, no. And then uh, motion to adjourn me. Second. <laughs> All approved. Thanks. Fine. Thank you very much. Thank See you. Yeah, we used to do it in the morning in the restaurant. Yeah. Yeah, that'd be awful expensive.